See, you can only love out of strength. It takes strength to love. You've got to speak with purpose. We think that our salvation is based on performance. God is not a man that he can lie. He don't lie. You be a vessel that God is Because you, somebody might need your holy presence to save them one day. Hi, this is Dr. Will Wheat again, and we're going to continue from our last discussion, and that discussion had to do with we live to give, which is just an extension on our conversation in tapping into God's eternal supply. How is that done? I am convinced that we have a key here in Scripture on how to tap into God's eternal supply. As a reminder, we draw uh, this revelation from the Scriptures, and it's found in Acts chapter 20, verse 35. The last part or the last sentence in that verse says, And remember the words of the Lord Jesus, that he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. And we, we talked to you about at the last video, we talked to you about the substance of the soul. Uh, and not just uh, the, uh, um, the character of the soul, but the substance of the soul is the desire to receive and we talked about if, if this is a healthy soul then it's a desire to receive to give to receive to share uh, we are created after the image and likeness of god and in cre being created after the image and likeness of god god breathes into us the breath of life now we on the on uh, that's us receiving life that's us receiving life from god but we are mirror images of god so as God breathes into us uh, life, we have a desire to live, and we have a, lot, a desire to take in breath, we breathe out our breath. And when we breathe out our breath, we're giving back what we've received. And our breath uh, uh, facilitates and gives life to plants and, and other aspects in the elements. So we live to give, and our breathing, we're practicing uh, <clears throat> receiving and giving all the time in, in our breathing. We breathe in, we breathe out. So we're automatically practicing godliness uh, without any consciousness of it. So it is our nature to receive, to give, and it is against our nature to receive just for ourselves. Think about that. If you breathe in and just hold your breath and not breathe out, then you will soon suffocate. You will soon cause body injury to you and your body will break down. It wouldn't function properly because you need to breathe in and breathe out to have all your, your organs function properly. You need to get rid of some, breathe in some fresh um, air and breathe out those, those toxins that could be harmful to your body. But what you breathe in out, which would be harmful to your body, would be actually a blessing to plants, okay? So your breath, your breathing in and out, is how you are representing God. And you're doing it without any thought. It's automatic. It is natural to receive, to give, and it's unnatural to receive for one's own self. And when people practice this selfishness of receiving for one's own self, it, it, it does them more harm than good. So here's the key to tapping into God's eternal supply, living to give, living to receive so that you may uh, share what you've received. Now, it also depends on the attitude in which you receive, how you receive and how you give also will affect the quality of your life. So last time we were talking about Cain and Abel and what their names meant. It wasn't that they were just historical uh, characters, but they, their names are given at a moment, uh, not just to talk about what's a good son, what's a bad son, but to show you how they were bringing their gifts to God, how they were giving, how they were worshiping God. And in worshiping God, it has to do with their giving and the attitude of their giving. Amen? So we, uh, Cain's name uh, meant uh, uh, is Kuhn, K-O-O-N, and it means a dirge or lament. And Cain was giving and wailing in his giving. He, he was doing what the Father wanted to do, but he did it with an attitude. He, he was complaining about what was asked of him. 
he did it, but he wasn't doing it joyfully. The same thing with Abel. Now, Abel's uh, uh, name is Havel, and it means to be empty or vain in word or deed or led astray. So Abel was always going off the path. He was always, he wasn't there and be as dutiful as Cain was. He was always going off the path. Now, uh, my friend, uh, Dr. John, Master Giovanni uses the example of the prodigal son as a fuller explanation of and story or, 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 or clearing up the story of Cain and Abel. And you see the prodigal son, he really uh, represents Abel going astray, going away from the father. And Cain represents the dutiful son that stays on the farm or the vineyard and does the work of the father. But he's lamenting, he's, he's, he's wailing, he's crying, he's complaining about doing the work. Well, Abel goes, he does what he does, he comes to himself and goes back to his father, makes this excuse about how he's no longer uh, um, uh, in the position to be called a son, but he's coming back as a servant, and his father doesn't even listen to him, he puts a robe on him, and there's joy in his heart because now he's accepted as a son. These two characters represent many of the people that make up the church. Many people come to church regularly, and many people give their tithes and their offerings regularly, but they, they, they're, they're, they're bitter about it. They're not happy about it. And others of us, we come to church and we empty. We don't bring anything to church, but we're just glad to be a part of the family. We, we give a little and then we go astray. We come back and we ask for forgiveness and we get forgiven and, and, and we receive with joy. Now, those of us who stay behind, we may be like Cain and get an attitude behind this person who's all Right? And always coming back, looking like they, they're having and getting and receiving the blessings. They're getting all the attention. Everybody's all happy because they're back. But you've been there all along, and nobody's throwing you a party. Nobody's appreciative of your consistent tithing and giving. And then the father says something curious. Why are you talking to the older son, all bent out of shape and angry? Your, your brother who was lost is now fine, found. You should be rejoicing. And, and we don't rejoice. We don't rejoice when a brother who's lost is found, a brother or sister who's lost and found. And, 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 and he was just happy to be a part of the family, though he was empty, though he wasn't given anything. Many of us are either on one or, or the other side, but neither Cain nor Abel are good examples of the giver. The good example of the giver is, is Jesus. We should be modeling ourselves after Jesus. We should be giving cheerfully. We should be giving joyously. We should be giving with dignity. And so when Abel was killed, God gave Eve and Adam another son, and they named his name Seth. And Seth means cheerful. It means joyous. It means dignity. So neither Cain nor Abel are examples of Christ but Seth would be an example of Christ. It's an example of the son who's about his father's business. And he's about his father's business with joy. And it's his father saying that his father is a giver. He is a giver and he's doing it with joy. He's living to receive. He's living to receive so that he may share his joy with others. If you are a true child of God, and you are a true child of God, but if you want to show the heart of your Father, it's shown in your giving. It's, if you're giving sparingly, if you're giving begrudgingly, or you have to be given out of compulsion, you're not showing forth the Father's heart. So you're not receiving heaven's bounty as God wants you to receive. James chapter 4 verses 1 through 3 gives you a good explanation about warring and fighting and trying to receive something, but you're not receiving it because you don't ask. So you ask and you still don't ask because you ask in the midst because you want to spend it on your own lust and your own desires. You're not trying to receive to share. You just want it to receive for your own self-pleasure. So what God is showing us through the scriptures in giving, he, you need to give joyously. God is not willing to do without a joyful, cheerful, willing to do it giver. It represents him. So if you want to tap into that in this apply, if you want to have the fruit that God wants you to have, change your attitude when it comes to giving. Look forward to giving. Give, to, give your tithes, give your offerings, but give to every charitable donation. Every time you have an opportunity to give, give, and you will notice that you'll never be broke. You'll never beg for bread. You're, and all your needs will, will be met and your blessings will overflow.
flow because you become a source for God to work through. And he will, the more generous you are, the more he'll give you, the more you're willing to give, the more God gives to you. You cannot be God giving. Well, this is Dr. Will Wheat, and I just want to encourage you, live to give. That way you will, you will have tapped into God's eternal supply. Well, whew, that's a lot. I know I went over my time a little bit, but I hope you're encouraged with this. I hope you, you not only hear it, but you apply it. You put it to work and put it to work today in Jesus' name and tap into that eternal supply. Well, until next time, remember this. God has plans for your life. And none of those plans include defeat. People of Greater Los Angeles, Apostle Will Wheat has a word from God that is revealing, powerful, and life-changing. Every Sunday, lives are being transformed by this powerful word from God. Families, businesses, church leaders, and the world are hearing God's plans for their lives. And none of those plans include defeat. It has been said that there have been Jesus sightings in his services. So you owe it to yourself to be a part of one of the greatest movements and Jesus sightings that this city has ever experienced. And you can download Apostle Week's Sunday messages for free at nccfc.net. NCCFC.net. Sunday services are at 1 p.m. And midweek services are Wednesdays at 7 p.m. There is faith for your destiny at nccfc.net. NCCFC. NCCFC. NCCFC.